This video is about the five Hot Wheels cars, the Twin Mill 3, the Bone Shaker, the MR11, the Fast Forward, and the Gazella GT. In this video, we'll go through everything related to all five cars, including the customization options and restrictions, the cars in the garage and on the field, and the hitboxes. Then, at the end of the video, I'll give you my honest thoughts on the cars. For the customization section of this video, we're going to group all five cars together, because actually, they're all identical. So these cars are extremely customizable. In fact, they have almost as many options as common or import cars like your Octane, Dominus or Fennec, with just a few added restrictions. Let's go through them all together. These items can be fully customized. The decal, paint color and paint finish, wheels, boost, topper, antenna, goal explosion and trail. The only item that is not customizable is the engine audio, which is locked to the unique one you receive with each car. So the Twin Mill can only use the Twin Mill's engine audio, the Bone Shaker can only use the Bone Shaker's engine audio, and so on. Also note that these engine audios cannot be used on any other cars. The only other restriction is that you can't use any other licensed items on these cars, so, for example, you can't use the T-Rex Goal Explosion or the Batman Goal Explosions on the Hot Wheels cars. Here's how the Twin Mill 3 looks in the garage. Here's a full demo of the engine audio. Here's a quick demo of the car on the field. The Twin Mill 3 has a plank hitbox, which is the same hitbox as the 16 Batmobile, the Mantis and the Sentinel. The hitbox on this car is pretty good overall. The sides are the best part, with the wheels lining up perfectly with the sides of the hitbox. The front and back are not too bad at all, with only a few really small pieces sitting outside the hitbox. The top is my main issue with this car. This piece sticking out of the middle of the car body, coupled with the fact that the roof sits so far back in the hitbox, means that dribbling feels really off on this car. So my overall score for the hitbox on the Twin Mill 3 is 7 out of 10. The top lets it down. Here's how the Bone Shaker looks in the garage. Here's a full demo of the engine audio. Here's a quick demo of the car on the field. The Bone Shaker has an Octane hitbox. The hitbox on this car is not great. The first thing I noticed when looking at this hitbox was how much of the car sits outside the hitbox. And if you compare it to some other cars in the game, you can see how rare this is. The other areas are all pretty average, nothing amazing at all. But the biggest problem with this car is the fact that the front of the car isn't visible from the in-game player view, because the roof totally blocks it. So it's basically a Jeep Wrangler. Overall, it's got to be one of the strangest hitboxes in the game, and I find it really puzzling that Psyonix decided to make it an Octane hitbox car, when as you can see here, it clearly fits the Dominus hitbox much better. My overall score for the hitbox on the Bone Shaker is 2 out of 10. 
It should be a Dominus. Here's how the fast forward looks in the garage. Here's a full demo of the engine audio. Here's a quick demo of the car on the field. The fast forward has an octane hitbox. The hitbox on this car is actually really good. In fact, it's similar to the octane itself in most areas, with the best part of the hitbox being probably the front, which almost perfectly lines up with the front of the hitbox. Only a tiny little bit sticks out. And the top is also really good, with only this small gap here, and a tiny gap at the front. My overall score for the hitbox on the fast forward is 9 out of 10. It's basically an octane. Before we get on to the next one, I just want to say a huge thank you to Marcos for giving me access to these cars to make this video. Marcos has a YouTube channel where he posts daily updates, covering everything in the item shop as well as covering all the bundles as they're released. So check out his channel linked on screen and in the video description. Also, if you want to be a more active member of the MOGS community, as well as hang out with me and other MOGS viewers, come join my Discord server. The details are on screen and again in the video description. Here's how the MR11 looks in the garage. Here's a full demo of the engine audio. And here's a quick demo of the car on the field. The MR11 has a Dominus hitbox. The hitbox on this car is pretty average in most areas. In terms of the gaps between the car and the hitbox, the front is not great, the top is average, the sides are okay, and the back is also okay. However, there is one thing I really like about this hitbox, and that is the top. As you can see, the middle of the roof perfectly lines up with the middle of the hitbox, and then the roof slopes down on either side, which I think means that this car would feel really good dribbling. My overall score for the hitbox on the MR11 is 7 out of 10. Nothing special at all. Here's how the Gazella GT looks in the garage. Here's a full demo of the engine audio. Here's a quick demo of the car on the field. The Gazella GT has a Dominus hitbox. The hitbox on this car is really good. Every single part of the car lines up really well with the edges of the hitbox. The worst part is probably the front, but even that isn't bad at all. Compared to some other licensed cars like the McLaren and the Lamborghini, this car is really good at the front. In fact, it might even be better than the Dominus itself. My overall score for the hitbox on the Gazella GT is 9 out of 10. It's basically a Dominus. So my overall thoughts on these cars are that 
As I kind of expected, the Gazella GT is by far my favourite. I love the design of this car. It kind of reminds me of a Komodo, which is one of my favourite cars in terms of appearance in the whole game. And I was really happy to find out that the hitbox on this car is actually really good as well. So I think for me, out of all of the cars, in terms of appearance and performance, the Gazella GT is a clear winner. Second place would have to go to the Fast Forward, just because it has a really good hitbox. However, in terms of appearance, I'm not a fan of it at all, and I would much prefer to use a Fennec or an Octane. And the other cars, the MR11 is okay. I don't love the appearance, it looks kind of weird to me. The Bone Shaker, it sounds cool. I quite like the engine audio. It's really kind of rough and rugged. So that's probably the main thing that the Bone Shaker has going for it. But other than that, I'm not really a fan. And then the Twin Mill 3, I mean, that's kind of unique because it has a plank hitbox. But I already have a 16 Batmobile, which I much prefer. But I guess if you wanted a plank car that was really customizable, that wasn't one of the import cars like the Mantis or the Sentinel, then yeah, you could go for the Twin Mill maybe. But I think there's definitely better choices out there for the Twin Mill. And I think you could say the same about most of the Hot Wheels cars, with the only exception being the Gazella GT. So we're not actually sure if these cars are even going to come back to Rocket League. My guess is that they probably will, but we haven't received any confirmation on that. If they do come back, I'm not sure I'd recommend that anyone buys them. If there are maybe 500 credits each, then yeah, maybe you could grab one or two of them. If they do come back and they're 500 credits, I'll definitely be buying the Gazella GT, just because I really like the appearance of it, and I like the engine audio, I think it's just an overall good car. But the other ones, I think if I did buy them, I'd probably never use them. So I think unless you're looking for an alternative to an Octane or Fennec, you really want another Octane hitbox car, and you like the look of the fast forward, then maybe you could get that one as well. But the other cars I just don't think are really viable. So yeah, those are my thoughts. But let me know what you guys think of them. Which ones are your favourite? Which ones do you not like? And do you think you'll pick any of them up if they do come back to the game? Let me know down in the comments. And if you do decide to pick them up, please consider using the MOGSRL creator code on screen now. Using this code massively helps the channel, so if you want to support the work that I do, then please consider using it. And like the video if you liked it, dislike it if not, subscribe for more videos like this as well as a whole bunch of other Rocket League content. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.